My name is Simon Brown. I'm doing the presentation today. We really we're looking at, at dividends, a part of investing which I think far too often we don't pay enough attention to. Uh, there's some reasons behind that and I think first and foremost perhaps is that your first dividend check is going to be absolutely tiny. Uh, you invest, uh, let's say, 10,000 Rand and you get a dividend check for maybe 100 or 150 bucks and you think to yourself, I'm not sure if this is worth the effort. It's the power of compound, it's the power of time. We'll certainly touch on that. I'm also going to go into what are they, what are the dates, how do they work, all of those type of issues. As always, we'll take questions at the end, uh, either text-based or audio if you have a microphone. So what is a dividend? A lot of words there. In essence, it's what they are is a company makes a profit and they return some of that profit to the owners of the company. And those owners are the shareholders. That's me, that's you, that's everybody else who owns some of the business. There are a couple of important points. Firstly, the company needs to make a profit. Secondly, it's entirely up to the board of directors as to whether or not they will pay a dividend. They may well decide to rather use the dividend to grow the business, buy out competitors, upgrade equipment, move into new territories and the like, maybe even move into new genres, new areas of business which they haven't worked on before. So they might, they're not always going to pay a dividend and they keep some of that profit back in the company to grow the company. And we get a benefit there as well because obviously we own it. So what in essence is your earnings per share, which is the profit per share, a part of that will be given back to shareholders as a dividend. So it's paid from their company profits. As I said, they need to make a profit. Obviously, if profits are under pressure, dividends will be under pressure. Typically paid twice a year uh, at the interim set of results and at the year-end set of results. A couple of points on that. Some companies only pay an annual dividend, so they don't pay at the mid-year. And typically you will see your year-end dividend is bigger than your interim. So maybe you get 50 cents at the interim and you get 75 cents at year-end, making your rand 25 for the year as a whole. It's at the director's discretion. And this is an important part. I've mentioned it already. It's up to the directors whether or not they will pay a dividend and how much of a dividend they will pay. Now what you will see is some companies have a dividend policy and they will talk about something called dividend cover. In other words, if dividend cover is, say, three, the dividend will be one-third of the earnings. So if the company earned around 50 in earnings per share, they would pay out 50 cents. And they will stick to that three times dividend cover methodology, which gives investors a bit of an understanding of where dividends will be relative to earnings. Of course, we don't always have very clear sight of what the earnings are or will be. Importantly, that dividend will be announced when results are announced, so they come out with a result statement every six months. A company might pay a special dividend and they might do it in between results. They would need to issue a sense announcement, stock exchange news service, and they would publish that out and say, we're paying special dividend. And a special dividend is exactly that. It's not the normal dividend. It's, they've got extra money. Telcom did it when they had all the profits from Vodacom. You saw the Platinum guys doing it in 2006, 2007. They were making super profits. So they were saying, look, this is not par for the course. We're going to do a special dividend. A company might also have picked up a bit of a war chest in terms of cash, and they're not sure what to do with it. They can't find any way to deploy that money. So they decide, well, then, tell you what, Let's give it out as a special dividend. Why do we like them? They, they profits without selling. I mean, what I mean by that is you buy a share. How do you make profit on that share? You need to sell it. What you get here is a scenario where you don't necessarily need to sell to get some profit. Now, again, and I'm just using a 10,000 Rand example, but 10,000 Rand maybe gets you two or three or 400 Rand dividend in year one. That's not a heck of a lot. But by year 10, you're getting a significantly better dividend. You've received a dividend a year, every year for the last 10 years. Suddenly, that dividend can really stack up. It can, in fact, be significantly more than your initial investment. So what we're able to do is to generate some profit. And that's to the point where I said I think a lot of folks invest without thinking about dividends. They really are quite small. But I'm in a situation now where when I get dividend alerts on some of my older investments, there are actually decent amounts of money that are coming through. Uh, not enough to retire on, not enough to go and buy myself a Greek island or something, but certainly not a bad amount anyway. 
They're tax-free. In other words, when you receive the dividend, there is no tax to be paid. I've got a whole slide on tax, so I'll touch on that later in the presentation. The law is changing, and I'll come to that. But as things stand right now, when you get the money in your account, there's no more tax to pay. And they would form part of an income strategy. Broadly, when investing, you've got two strategies, income or growth. And income is saying, okay, you're going to be taking, your focus is going to be on that money coming back. It's a much longer term strategy. As I said initially, it's going to be relatively slow. If you look at the bottom of the screen, there's a URL there. Um, it's a short URL to, to, to a, a webinar we did on investing in a dividend, a high dividend yield portfolio. And what we were looking there is let's get a dividend portfolio that's giving at least 5% or so in its first year. And if that then can continue to grow at a decent rate, by year five or by year 10, from that initial investment, we should be getting dividends that could be approaching 20 or even 30%, perhaps even higher. So that certainly can be as an income strategy, that's going to be a longer term strategy. And in that case, the focus is dividend yield. Now it's a historic number, we can also get forward numbers. I'm going to delve into dividend yield, but that really is the number that we absolutely care about. Quickly to go in a bit more into, into growth versus income, your growth stock probably paying a smaller dividend or no dividend um, because they're reinvesting profits back into the business. And, and let's look at MTN. Back in the day, in the mid-90s when MTN was very new, they were paying little or no dividend simply because whilst they were making a profit, they were taking those profits and they were applying it back into building base stations, expanding into other countries and territories and the like. So we understand that in that space is there, very much a case of, okay, they're making money, but they're still growing. They need that money to fund the growth. An income stock would be probably a more mature business or a very cash generative business, and they would pay out most of their profit. And again, let's look at MTN. What's happened with MTN is they've evolved. And they made an announcement late last year that, in fact, they couldn't find any way to deploy their money. In other words, there were no big acquisitions they could look to do. So what they're going to start doing is paying out more dividends more of the profit is dividend. So it's that evolution, that maturing of a business. It starts as a high growth stock, you're going to find lots of share price appreciation, and MTN was two rand at one stage, and in fact, 10 years ago, it was trading at around eight to eight or 10 rand, and now up at 140 and so. So they start off, they're growing, the share price is moving, but the profit they're making, they're putting back into the business. Then as they start to mature and the like, what you start to see is perhaps the share price is moving less uh, excitedly, less big gains, but they're giving you a lot more in the dividend space. So you can buy a company today which is in growth, and you say my focus now is growth. In 10 or 20 years, I'm going to be owning it less for the growth and more for that dividend payment. Here's my favorite chart, probably my absolute favorite chart of all time. What's it showing us is dividends paid. I'm using Standard Bank as an example. Standard Bank is a share you could have bought in 1991 for under two rand. Um, you could have even picked it up in around the one rand 50 levels. And the blue line is the dividend referenced on the left-hand side as they pay it by annually every six months. The one that's really powerful is the green line referenced on the right-hand side. Now what we can see here is over the last 20 years, Standard Bank has paid almost 30 rand in dividends, almost 30 rand in dividends, and yet you paid less than 2 rand for that share. So if you had put 10 rand into Standard Bank back in 1991, and that was big money back then, the dividends that you've received in those 20 years for that 10,000 investment are going to be in the space of 150,000 of dividends. Notwithstanding, you still have your Standard Bank shares and they've gone up 50-fold. So your Standard Bank shares are worth 500,000, your dividends are 150,000 of that. And that's what I mean about getting profits out without having to actually sell. You're now getting dividends from Standard Bank of around, uh, I think it's 386 per share, so you're getting dividends currently that are roughly twice what you paid. So you're getting about 20,000 a year from an investment that you made uh, 20 years ago, but you only put 10,000 in and you've still got those shares. And that is the serious power of, of dividends and why they're so very, very strong. And I think why they're neglected, because we tend to look at that initial left-hand side of the chart. They're not terribly exciting, but then they start to gather momentum. What we can see, just for interest sake there, 
is the dividends going a bit wonky towards the sort of the right hand side of the chart and that very much was the global financial crisis. Dividend yield, as I said, that's the important number we need to focus on. We can't look at a number in isolation. If I tell you you got a two rand dividend, your question needs to be, well, what did I pay to get the two rand dividend? Because if I paid two rand to get two rand, great deal. If I paid a thousand rand to get two rand, less of a good deal. So we express it as a percentage, and it's really quite simple. It is the dividend per share divided by the price per share and multiplied by 100 to get a percentage. Now that dividend per share would be over the previous 12 months. So if a company pays interim and final, it would include both the interim and the final dividend. If they're only paying a final dividend, obviously it would be the final dividend divided into share price. What's important to note here, of course, is that that is a historic number. It means what they have paid. Now the future is going to be the same, better, or worse. You need to make a judgment call on whether you think dividends can hold. And I'm coming to that in my recap section, so I'll leave that there for now. But certainly that's how we get a dividend yield. So it represents that annual income from the share as a percentage. You got a dividend yield of three, you invest 10,000 Rand, you would have got 300 Rand out. As I said, not a heck lot, but remember that chart from a few slides ago. You're going to get different types of dividends for different shares. Typically, your income stocks have got dividends of three or greater. Your gross stocks have got dividends of less than three. Quick point I'm going to stress there. Property stocks, they have a very high dividend yield, but it's not dividend. It's interest they are paying you, and interest has tax implications, whereas dividends are currently tax-free. So an example of a, of a dividend yield, we've got a share price at 75 Rand, pays an interim dividend of 65 cents, a final dividend of 135 cents. And you can see there, as I said, your, your final is bigger than your, than your interim. In this case, twice the size. It's going to vary. Sometimes it's the same, but usually you will find your final dividend is a much higher amount. So your total dividend for the preceding 12 months would have been 2 Rand. Therefore, your dividend yield is 2 Rand divided by 75 Rand multiplied by your 100 gives you a dividend yield, a historic dividend yield of 2.7%. Again, you invested 10,000 Rand, you got 270 Rand back. And if they grow that dividend at, let's say, 30%, which is aggressive, but let's say they do, we add 30% onto the 2.7 um, and we would find that dividend yield going up to 3.6. So next year you get 360 Rand. And so it goes, and slowly it starts to gather momentum. In those early days of investing, dividend yields are not exciting. Those dividend checks are very, very small. Look, a couple of hundred Rand isn't bad, but one of the problems is you simply can't reinvest it into the share because costs are going to be too high. So it's some money, and what I, would, what I did in those days was basically bulk up my dividends in every six or 12 months add some money, use the dividends, go buy some stock or other. And then as I said, over time, those values will start becoming more, more impressive and you can actually use them to do something. You buy, and buy some shares, reinvest it, take a holiday, something like that. Very important that we understand the dates associated with dividends and how we transact with them. Uh, as I said, the actual dividend will be announced at the same time as the results, both mid-year and year-end. The very important date is something called the LDT, the last day to trade. You have to own the share at the close of business on that LDT to receive the, the, the dividend. So if we said there's, there's a share, the LDT is the 3rd of June. If you are holding that share at the close of the market, i.e. 5 p.m. on the 3rd of June, you will get that dividend. Typically, it will come into your account about a week or 10 days later. What's important is it doesn't matter when you buy it, bought the share or when you sell the share. As long as you hold it on that close of business, on the last day to trade, you will get the dividend. Whether you bought it uh, that very same day, whether you bought it earlier in the year or maybe even earlier in the decade or maybe decades ago, that doesn't matter. If you hold it at the close, you get it. And then you can sell it immediately. So last day to trade is Friday. At 5 p.m. Friday, you hold the share. First thing Monday morning, you can sell the share. Now, there's something called XDIV. 
I'll come to that in a moment. If you're thinking there's a quick way to make a buck here, there's a catch there. I'll get touch that in a moment. But that's the most critical one. Hold the share at that last day to trade. If you're holding the share on LDT, you get the dividend. The pay date, that's the other date we really care about. And that's the date which the money will appear in your account, wherever the shares are held. So in the stockbroker account or whatever, the money will just appear in the account on that pay date. There are other dates. They're not so important. The one thing which catches a lot of people is this talk about shares cannot be dematerialized and the like. That's just for the old days of, of, of paper shares. They're all electronic these days. You can still buy or sell. That's not a problem. So when the dividends, when the results are announced, dividends will be announced if any. There will be a last day to trade. And that date is typically going to be a couple of weeks in the future. Sometimes it might be a couple of months in the future. And your stockbroker will certainly be able to give you a list of those dates. And in fact, the company website. So if it's pick and pay, you could go to their website and they would tell you those important dates as well. So you held the share on the last day to trade. It was Friday. And then the next day, the next trading day, the share goes what we call XDIV. That is the first trading day after LDT. And what you will see, share price will typically drop by their dividend amount. So let's say on Friday we had a share that was trading at 10 Rand, and it was paying a dividend of 1 Rand, and Friday was last day to trade. You hold the share at the close of business. Monday morning you are now due 1 Rand. You'll get it in a week or so, but you're due that 1 Rand, and the share price would have fallen to, 10, to 9 Rand. So it was trading at 10. On the Monday morning, you then got a 9 Rand share price and you've got 1 Rand cash. So the share will fall by that dividend amount. Now, sometimes it will fall by more, and that will typically be certainly if the market is red, it might fall by more, and it might fall by more because a lot of people are getting out, they were holding on for the dividend. It might even fall by less than the dividend amount. That could be because the share, the share is, is, is having a, a, a strong period where people are buying it. And the fact that it's gone next day, a lot of people have taken that as an opportunity to enter. It might just have been a green day in the market. But certainly don't think you can buy the share for 10 Rand on Friday. On Monday, you've got the 1 Rand dividend and now you can sell it for 10 Rand. That's typically not the case. But you will see strong companies will pick up the dividend fairly quickly. In other words, they will recoup that dividend loss you know, usually in a, in, a, in a couple of days or a couple of weeks. So if you're prepared to hang on and take a little bit of risk, you could get that. Cumdiv, the phrase that's often used, the dividend has been announced, but the pay date, the LDT date, is still in the future. So the market knows that there is a dividend being paid and it's happening in the future and the share is then said to be uh, trading Kumduv, another way of putting it is the, the stock is carrying a dividend. Because the dividend's open knowledge, everyone knows about it, it's been made public knowledge, but the pay date, the LDT date rather, hasn't yet come around. Script dividends, sometimes a company may offer shares instead of paying a dividend. Standard Bank was doing this recently during the, the financial crisis, they maintained their dividend, so they didn't cut it. But rather than go out and, and, and pay out cash, and cash was king back then, they wanted to keep as much as possible, they, should, they said to shareholders, tell you what, we're not going to, you can take share, you can take cash. Absolutely, you have the right to cash, but you could also, if you want, you could have some free shares. Now, there's an issue there because those free shares are taxable when you sell them. So you lose that tax free nature in that space. Slight premium, and what I mean by that is that typically what will happen is they will pay you shares to the value of 105% of the dividend payment. So if the dividend, if you were going to get, say, a thousand rands worth of dividends, they will give you a thousand and fifty rand worth of shares. So they give you a slight premium because obviously they want folks to take that up. What you will get, it will be X number of shares per hundred held. So the announcement will be for every hundred shares held, you will get 3.2 shares as a dividend. What's very nice about it is that if you don't need to spend the dividend and you say to yourself, well, you know what, if I get that dividend, I'm just going to use the money to go and buy more of the same, this will save you on brokerage fees. There's a tax implication, as I said, but dividends are often, you're only going to get a couple of thousand 
the fees as a percentage might be fairly high. So you just get the shares straight away. And typically, if I'm offered shares in lieu of cash, at this point where the cash isn't my main focus in terms of needing to live off that money, I say, great, I will take the shares. And then we get something called a share premium. So a dividend is being paid, but it's not really a dividend. It's a share premium. They're paying it out of the equity portion of their balance sheet. And I'm not going to delve into that. We'll get our fundamental boffins to talk about that. It's tax-free, but, and this is a big but, because there's implication here, the amount is deducted from your purchase price. So an example, you bought a, you bought a share for 10 rand. It then pays a share premium of 50 cents. You physically get that 50 cents in cash. You don't pay tax on it, but your purchase price is adjusted downwards by the 50 cents. So no longer is your purchase price 10 rand, your purchase price is now 9 rand 50. And then when you sell, in essence, that extra profit is added into your tax implication. So certainly there's a tax implication. You're seeing a lot of companies doing it. Um, it it's accounting processes and the like. I'm not a fan of it, but certainly, you know, I'm, I'm still getting myself a dividend. I'm typically a very long-term holder in my investment portfolio, so that doesn't overly stress me. What it does mean on a lot of the online brokers, if you go and check their dividend yield, it might say zero because they're paying out a share premium. In other words, there's something being paid, but it's not, strictly speaking, a dividend. And if I'm looking at, at, at looking to, to buy dividend stocks, I'm constructing a high dividend yield portfolio and the like, I typically ignore share premium. Tax implication on dividends. Currently, dividends as you receive them are tax-free. There is a STC tax, stands for secondary tax on companies of 10%, but it's paid at source. So if the dividend announcement says there will be a 75 cents dividend, the company has paid tax on top of that. You will get the 75 cents. There's new tax law coming in on effect of the 1st of April 2012, and I'm struggling to find out exactly what the implication is. It seems to me that the implication is going to be that we will get taxed on our dividends at our tax rate, but it will be a withholding tax. So there might be still a 10% tax, and the main difference there, it doesn't impact us. We still get hit the same. So instead of paying a 75 cent dividend, they would pay an 82 and a half cent dividend, and they would withhold 10%, and we would still get the 75 cents. The big deal is it's an issue for the companies, because with STC, secondary tax on companies, they could offset taxes against each other and they can't do that anymore. So it might have a small impact. Folks I've spoken to, folks, uh, Keith McLaughlin commented that it might impact dividends, but he's not expecting it to be significant whatsoever. And then, of course, there's the share premium. Uh, because they reduce your purchase price by the amount paid, that has a tax implication when you're selling. Some risks because nothing in life comes to you completely risk-free, uh, a company might cancel a dividend. Anglo-America paid a dividend for over 70 years, every six months for 70 years, and then in 2008, they didn't cut the dividend, they just canceled the dividend. There was no dividend. Net effect, the share price fell 16% on the day of that announcement. They could also just reduce dividend. Now, typically, companies are very loath to cut dividends. They would like to keep them at least at last year's level. That's typically the measure they would look to. They don't want the dividends to go backwards. So they might reduce it, and that's not what they like, but they might have to. Cancelling a dividend in its entirety is a very aggressive move. You might find dividend growth slows. So dividend growth was maybe growing at say 25% per year, um, but as, as you're moving forward, that starts to slow. And that's simply a factor of it's a mature company, and as it's moving, it's becoming harder and harder for it to maintain those high levels of, of growth, so the dividend growth starts to slow. That could, of course, be offset quite simply by the fact that the companies are now paying out a larger portion of their profit. And then something to be careful of, a high dividend yield could be a falling price. And that falling price could be predicting a dividend cut. So you've got a, let's use an example, one rand dividend of 20 rand share gives me a five dividend yield. The share price falls to 10 rand, and suddenly that dividend yield is 10%. It 
It looks massively attractive, 10% dividend yield. The question is, why is the share fallen 50%? That well could be that the market is saying we expect bad results and therefore we think one of the outcomes of those bad results is going to be a cut in the dividend. So if you see high dividend yield, go and do some digging, go see what's happened to share price, go look at the historic dividend and also on some of the bigger stocks you'll get consensus data which will give you an indication of what the brokerage community expects the dividends to be over the next one, two and three years. They're not always right but it's some place to start. Quick recap, dividends often ignored, but a very impo important part of investing. It starts slow. That first dividend you receive is going to be relatively small in RAND terms and in percentage terms of your overall investment. But over time, dividends can certainly exceed purchase price, and they certainly can be an attractive part of your investment and money is paid out. And there are lots of examples of companies. Um, I think another one is Aspen who if you'd bought the share back in the early 2000s, you've basically received that share price back in dividends, and of course you still hold the share. So dividends, very much a viable strategy, very much something I think we should keep a radar on. Um, there's nothing wrong with a growth strategy, which is buy low, sell high, dividends less important, but I think it's something that we should take a factor in, that we should roll around in our head and say, okay, dividends, let's look at this, particularly if we're building a longer term portfolio. Ladies and gents, that's my presentation. Dividends, short, sweet, very, very simple, very, very powerful. Uh, do we have any questions? If there are any questions, you can put them into the text box at the bottom of the GoToWebinar app. If you've got a microphone attached, you can just raise your hand and I will activate your microphone. I'm seeing Charles, he's asking, is there a time frame, okay, gotcha, is there, from when results are released, is there a certain period by which they must pay the dividend? Short answer is no. When they publish the results, they can give that last day to trade, that LDT, and it can be pretty much any period into the future. Tony is asking me to re-explain share premium. Let's start off and say share premium is in essence they're paying you a dividend. In other words, they're giving you a cash payout. But they're taking it out of the balance sheet and that has issues on the balance sheet in, 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 in that space there. So it's not directly for their purposes a cash flow item comes out of shareholder equity, not a cash flow item, so it, bol it bolsters their supposed cash holdings. What's critically important for us is that whilst we don't pay tax when we receive it, what does happen is that it, our purchase price is reduced by that share premium amount. As I said, a 50 cent share premium, if you pay 10 rand for the share, you get a 50 cent share premium. What that means is when you sell it, SARS, for purposes of determining your profit, will say that you paid 9 Rand 50. The 10 Rand less that 50 cents share premium you got. So you are getting cash, but it's a lot less tax free. If you're being taxed at your max uh, uh, CGT rate, that's 10%. If you've been taxed at your max marginal rate, that could be 40%. Any more questions coming through? I'm not seeing any hands raised. I'm not seeing any in the text box. Nope, ladies and gents, it seems that uh, no more questions coming in. Thank you for your time this afternoon. I hope you take something away from the presentation. Thanks very much for attending.